In this video, I'm gonna break down exactly how I finally got six pack abs by eating more, training less, and never counting a single calorie. So I always grew up a bit chubby. I'd never seen my six pack, but deep down, I always wanted to be lean. But like a lot of people in life, I just loved food too much. Like one of my earliest memories I can ever remember is me in school stealing grapes from some of the kids' lunchbox because I was just a hungry little shit and I couldn't help myself. And so growing up like that made me fat for all of my childhood, all of my teenage years, and even into my young adult years. And so it wasn't until I got my first full-time job that I could actually start affording my own foods so I could take control of my diet. It was around that time that I could start focus with intention and purpose on, on my diet and essentially start buying and preparing my own foods. So the intention was there, but not the, not the knowledge. And effort can only get you so far. So I finally had the money, you know, I would buy my own food. I, I would start buying all these quote unquote healthy foods, uh, as you can see, a lot of oatmeal, fruit, nuts, lots of vegetables, rice, meat, bagels, lots of bagels, whole, whole wheat bagels, as they say, uh, because supposedly that's good for us. But even though I was preparing my own foods and I was absolutely dialed in, I wasn't doing the right things. And this could only get me so far. Even after one to two years of absolute monk mode, so this is right before I started that job and taking care of my diet. And then this was, I think one or two years afterwards. I was only able to get so lean, as you can see, I would say maybe 15% barely at the lowest, but I didn't really look like I lifted. I just looked like some, some regular dude, not fat like the left, but definitely no six pack, just smooth, fit, maybe slim. And that only got me so far because there was a knowledge gap. I thought that eating healthy meant these foods. Like, come on, it, like, if you ask any regular person on the street, do these foods look healthy? They'd probably say, yeah, that looks pretty good. You'd probably get pretty lean eating like this. But fast forward a few years later, and I, after years of experimenting, studying, learning more about nutrition and training, I realized how wrong that previous approach was. And from years of studying experimentation, I was able to unlock the blueprint to finally get a six pack. In fact, I got it while enjoying my diet the most I ever have and while training the least I ever have. So today I wanna to share the one key change that might be holding you back. I'll share every single thing I did with my nutrition and training so you can copy me and get a six pack in three to six months. And I'll also go over how to do it all without starving or tracking a single calorie. So here's why you might be struggling. So most people out there, if you think about losing weight, going on a diet, the typical approach is this flexible dieting approach. What this means is pretty much you can eat whatever you want as long as you track your calories, you're making sure you're staying in a calorie deficit and you're hitting your macros. So you're tracking your protein, your fats and your carbs. The problem with this is you're not focusing on the quality of nutrition. People with this method, they like it because you know they can still eat their fucking ice cream, their cookies, um, all that dirty stuff, as long as if it fits their macros. So they bust out a food scale, they weigh their fucking cookies and their chicken breast without actually worrying about what they ate. And so what this leads to is these symptoms. These, these symptoms are what people associate with getting lean. They think if you're trying to diet down, you're just gonna have to deal with extreme hunger, constant food cravings and low energy. But it doesn't have to be that way. These are not generic symptoms of just trying to get lean. These are symptoms of your shitty approach and the junk foods that you are eating. So if you actually just change what you eat, 
you don't have to deal with these symptoms. Okay? So, next mistake I see is people are training too frequently, they're training with too much volume, and they're simply not training hard enough. So if you go to any gym today, you'll see people there, they're barely putting in any effort. Sure, they might be there many times a week, they might be doing a lot of sets, aka junk volume, but if you watch them execute the sets, people just straight up aren't training fucking hard enough. Like, they're leaving too many reps in the tank. They're not going close to failure. And so, if you're not going close to failure, you're not really fucking doing anything. You, you might as well just stay home because you're just wasting your time. And so, this just leads to people struggling to get through the training sessions. They feel like, oh, I gotta go to the gym like five, six times a week for like two hours each time and I have so many sets to get through. And so then they're not making any progress. They're getting weaker in the gym because they're not pushing themselves. They're not just training hard, training to failure. And so they get weaker and they lose muscle and they feel like getting lean means you have to lose all this muscle and your metabolism slows down. And The last mistake is people are doing too much cardio when they're trying to cut. When instead they should be focusing on just movement. So if you go to any gym, you'll see people spending hours on elliptical machines, rowers, stationary bikes, running on treadmills. And not to be harsh, but if you look at their physiques, generally they don't look very good. That's because this is not an efficient way to spend your time. This, this is not a good way to burn calories. All it does, sure it might burn some calories, but then it just makes you hungrier, it impacts your recovery. So you're just going in circles, you're not getting anywhere. So, if you actually do things the right way, the right method that I'm about to teach you, it can actually be, be so fucking easy. Like, you can actually enjoy big, satisfying meals without counting a single calorie, ever. Like, you don't have to worry about these macros bullshit. Like, macros? What macros? I don't even know what my macros are. It doesn't fucking matter. I just eat real food, and I eat until I'm not, no longer hungry. And so with this new approach, you're less hungry, you have more energy, you spend zero time on cardio machines, and you spend less than two hours in the gym a week because we're focusing on, again, quality of the workouts, quality of the sets, instead of just volume. And so when you focus on the quality, you train hard, you can actually get stronger, which leads to building muscle while losing fat, which is what everyone wants. And all this leads to is an effortless shredding six, 12 weeks, 18 weeks, whatever, however long, however long it takes you. So how do we actually get it to look like this? How did I do it? So firstly, most important is what you ate, okay? So what I ate was essentially meat, eggs, dairy, nuts, low-carb fruit, and low-carb veg. As you can see from these meals, lots of steak, sausages, onion, mushroom, vegetables, cheese, low-carb fruits like berries, blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, watermelon, a lot of yogurt, more steak, butter, cheese, eggs, uh, lots of ground beef as well. I don't have many photos of ground beef, but shitloads of ground beef, ground beef every day. Why I eat like this is because, firstly, these foods have lots of protein and lots of fats, which are exactly what you need if you want to build muscle, if you want to have a healthy hormonal system. And then secondly, these foods are very satiating, meaning they fill you up. They make it very hard for you to overeat. Like, if no one is going to get fat eating foods like this. It is, unless you really fucking try, it is almost impossible to get fat eating foods like this. So if you just eat the right foods, it's gonna be effortless to get lean. Now the other side of that is what you wanna avoid. So these are the foods that I didn't eat in order to get a six pack. 
First and probably most important is grains. So as you can see from this nice little image here, things like cro croissants, breads, cookies, rice, pasta, pizza, noodles, cereal. Reason being is I actually have a whole video on why you want to cut out grains, but on a high level, firstly, grains have wheat, especially has this thing called exorphins in it, which is which when you eat it, it triggers opioid like receptors in your brain, making it making you want to eat more. So essentially, all of these foods are appetite stimulants. They don't actually fill you up. All they do is make you want more food. So obviously, if you're trying to get lean, if you want to get a six pack, you don't want to get more hungry, you want to be less hungry. So it makes sense to cut these things out. Not to mention grains are generally not good for your glucose levels. So your blood sugar, they can cause rapid spikes followed by a rapid crash leading to increased food cravings, lowered energy, lowered metabolism, and generally just harder for your body to burn off fat. Second thing I avoided is any processed foods. So anything that comes in a packet or a wrapper and has like 20 different chemicals on the ingredients list. Obviously, if something's made in a lab and it's got like a million chemicals in it, it's not gonna be good for you. So same with processed sugar, things like chocolates, ice cream, cookies, candy, anything like that. It's just not what you wanna eat if you wanna get lean. So if you go back to the foods I was eating, if you notice, all of these are single ingredient foods. When you buy them, they come as they are, as a whole ingredient, a whole food. You just wanna focus on whole foods. Next part of nutrition is fasting. So fasting is just not eating for a certain period of the day. So in my journey to getting a six pack, almost every day I was just eating two meals a day. So what this looks like is tea, coffee and water all morning. And then for lunch, you would have a big satisfying lunch. And then same for dinner, a big satisfying dinner. No calorie counting, no restricting, just eating the right foods at certain periods of the day. And then once a week, I would also introduce a OMAD day or one meal a day, just once a week. I just find it's a nice reset. Firstly, it's a nice reset on your body, your gut, your digestion. And then secondly, it's also just an easy way to guarantee a big deficit for the day and for the week. Because obviously, if you're just eating one meal that day, you're going to be in a pretty big deficit. Um, so what that looks like is just tea, coffee, water all day, and then a big dinner to finish off the day. Now, I know you might be looking at this and saying, wow, okay, right now I probably eat like six meals a day. Going to one or two meals a day sounds very extreme, sounds very difficult, doesn't sound very plausible. And I get it, but that is because right now you're probably eating a lot of appetite stimulants. Like I said before, wheat is very appetite stimulating. So when you cut out these rubbish foods and you eat more nutrient dense, satiating whole foods like this, it becomes really fucking easy to only eat one or two meals a day. Once you get accustomed to eating foods like this, you can go 24 hours without eating because your body has all the nutrients it needs your insulin levels are low, so your body is able to tap into its food storage. You have a lot of fat on your story, on your body that your body can use as energy. And so given that you will not be hungry, you can eat one to two meals a day easier. So that's everything nutrition wise. It's really fucking simple. Like a 10 year old could do it. You just eat the right foods. You don't eat shitty foods. And then you don't eat for per certain periods of the day. That is it, no calorie counting, no fucking food scales, checking my macros and all that. Just eat the right foods, don't eat shit foods, don't eat for certain periods of the day. Simple, done. Okay, moving on to training. So, firstly, it doesn't actually matter what training split you do, it doesn't matter what exercises you do. The main problem 99% of people have is they are not training hard enough. 
So even if you just kept, kept whatever split, whatever routine you're doing, and you just started training fucking hard, that will get you results. Now, once you've accepted and you are starting to train hard, I think the most optimal routine or training philosophy is a high intensity training routine, AKA Mike Mentor, AKA Dorian Yates style of training. Because this allows you to train really fucking hard while giving you plenty of recovery so you can actually make gains because that is when you grow, when you actually rest. Plus it's just really efficient. Like you're only training three times a week with this training philosophy. So it's as an example, chest and back, rest, legs, rest, delts and arms, rest, rest, repeat. That is it. And each of these training sessions only takes about 30 minutes each because we're only doing one set to failure per exercise. I know it might seem like really minimal compared to what you might be doing now, but that is all it takes given that you are training hard and training to absolute failure. Then we do two to three exercises per muscle group. Again, training to absolute failure, meaning that you cannot get another rep by any means necessary. That is what it takes. That is what I mean when I say training hard, training to absolute failure. And then lastly, the most important part of training is progressive overload. So getting stronger week by week, adding weight every week, if not adding weight to the bar, then adding a rep, even adding a rep every single session accumulates over a long period. And over time you'll get really fucking strong, which means you get more muscle. And yes, you can do this while losing fat because 99% of people can build muscle while losing fat. Most people haven't optimized their training and nutrition enough to get to a point where they are intermediate enough to not be able to build muscle and lose fat at the same time. I know I kind of skimmed over the training part real quickly, but that's because I recently did a full 20 minute video breaking down the whole high intensity training philosophy. I will link that later if you're interested in learning more about how this works, but essentially this is it at a high level. I'll just quickly go over the exact routine that I'm doing right now. This is what it looks like, Monday chest and back. So some form of press, a fly, and then two pulls and then a rear delt fly. All one set to failure, 30 minute workout, easy. Legs, a leg press, an extension, a curl and a calf raise, simple. Friday, some form of press, a lateral raise, two forms of curls and then two forms of tricep exercises. Everything one set to failure, easy. This is like an hour and a half of workouts every week and it has gotten me the most results. It has gotten me the most shredded while building muscle. This is all you need. Lastly, I'll just go over activity, AKA movement, AKA steps. So you don't need to do any running or cycling or elliptical, ellipticaling, is that a word? Well, yeah, it is now. Uh, rowing, none of that. You don't need any of these machines. All you need to do if you want to get a six pack is just walking because walking increases your caloric output, which is what we want when we want to get lean, we want a calorie deficit. And it does this without increasing your hunger or impacting your recovery. Generally, these more intense methods of cardio will increase your hunger because they are more intense. And then they will, again, they will also impact your recovery because they are more intense. Walking is very, very light, it's very gentle on the body. You can actually improve recovery by increasing blood flow without straining your muscles or your overall cardiovascular system too much. And so I did this while walking 17 to 20,000 steps a day. For my body weight and my body type, that is roughly 700 extra calories burnt every day. And so you can see how much easier that makes it to lose weight and to stay in a calorie deficit if you're just walking without getting hungrier. Here are my receipts. Uh, these are my step counts for the past few months. As you can see, 20,000, 19,000, 18,000. 
this might sound very impossible for you right now, but if you just gradually taper your way up, you will get there. Anyone can get there. And you don't have to do it all in one go. You can go for a morning walk. You can go for a walk after lunch. You can go for a walk after dinner. Some other tips to walk more are just park further away from wherever you're driving to. You can use the stairs more. Um, if you work like an office job or like a, a work from home job, you can get a walking desk. Um, anything like that. Like once you put it in your mind that steps, 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 I want to get more steps. Then you start to see opportunities everywhere to get more steps. And it just, it is ingrained into my lifestyle now. Right now I get at least 10,000 steps every day without even thinking about it. Like it's just second nature. I think my 10,000 step a day streak is like 250 plus days at this point. Trust me, it gets easier. You just, you make a habit of it and it becomes a habit. It's effortless. So that is everything training and nutrition wise that helps me get a six pack and that I truly believe can help you get a six pack if you just follow. It's really fucking simple, anyone can do it. So to put it all, to sum it all together, here is your 90 day game plan. So these two photos are actually roughly 90 days apart. And so you can go from something like this to something like this in 90 days. Here's how you're gonna do it, all right? Start eating meat, eggs, dairy, fruit, vegetables. Stop eating grains and processed foods. Stop eating all day, just eat two big satiating meals, meaning until you are full, without counting any calories or worrying about any macros. You're gonna start training three times a week only, only one set to failure each exercise while focusing on getting stronger each session. And then with your steps, you're just gonna firstly increase your step count by 5,000. After 30 days, increase it by another 5,000. And then after another 30 days, increase it by another 5,000. This is it, That's, this is the fucking blueprint right here. That is everything you need to finally get six pack abs in 90 to 180 days, depending on where your starting point is. It really is that fucking simple. Just follow all these steps and you'll get there. Uh, if you wanna learn more about high intensity training, I know I kind of skipped over it quickly. Um, I will leave a link on the screen somewhere. But other than that, that's everything I have for you today. Thanks for watching, cheers, bye.